Hello, my name is Dane Sherman. I'd like to welcome you today to our instruction session on how to get the most out of your academic research. From the library's website, I'll go over the library's materials, how it's organized, we'll do searches on several tabs to show you the different resources that are available, we'll talk about how to get help from the library, and how to get help from the librarians anytime, day or night, um, if you have a question. Uh, we'll also demonstrate a couple of our most popular databases so you can really get the feel for doing academic research. The first thing to keep in mind is how do you get to the library's website and it's not necessarily obvious. The easiest way is if you go to the Southeastern main webpage southeastern.edu and then go to academics and then go all the way down to library. That will get you to the library webpage. Another way to get there is to just go down to the bottom of the southeastern webpage, really any of the southeastern webpages, and you'll see at the bottom My Den, Webmail, Moodle, Library, and you can click there to get to the library webpage. One of the most important things we can talk about is how to get help. Um, so we need to talk about ways to ask a librarian. Now over on the right side of the library webpage, you'll see Ask a Librarian. Ask a Librarian has a number of ways to get help, and the most important one for people who are off campus um, is chat with us 24-7. You can click that chat function and a box will pop up and you can type your question. You'll be chatting with a live librarian. It will not be a robot or anything electronic. It's going to be a real person on the other end. Um, also, just know that it's going to be a professional librarian, even if it's not a southeastern librarian. So we, we do monitor it. but We don't monitor it the entire 24-7 period. Sometimes we have other librarians doing it that are not necessarily employees of Southeastern, but they're, they're very professional and know what they're doing. So uh, that's one great way to get help, and it never closes weekends, holidays, whatever. Anytime the library is closed or open, it's available. Another way to get help is you can email us, uh, you can text us, you'll see those um, buttons. You can also call us. Now those may take some time to get back to you if the library is closed. Uh, it may not be answered immediately, but just know that uh, if you leave us a message, we will eventually get it uh, when we open back up or when we check our email, and we will respond to you. But if you want something immediately, the only way to get that help is the 24-7 chat. Now, I want to talk about uh, a way to get research started, and in that case, I want to talk about Quick Search. Quick Search is over on the left side of the page, and it's a tab. Quick search is both good and bad. It's good, it gives you tons of information. It's bad, it can overwhelm you. Now, an example of this is how it searches multiple databases. The library has about 150 periodical databases, and these databases are searched, a multitude of them, or a great number of them, at one time, hence search multiple databases. Uh, we can do a keyword search there, uh, we can do title or author. When we do a search, and we'll do a simple search on something like student loans, you'll see what I'm talking about when I say that there's a bad and good of the quick search. The good is that we got 179,000 records back. Uh, that's tons of them. That's great. It's also bad that it can overwhelm you. So if you're interested in doing a paper, say for example, on student loans, this is just a good resource. But we want to talk about the kind of research you're going to get back. We're going to also talk about ways to limit it. The first one is going to be a record called a research starter or start your research. And it's going to be on the topic of student loans. If I look at that, I see immediately that it's a Salem Press Encyclopedia. If I click on that, I can see a number of things about it. It's uh, titled Student Loans. It's by Isaiah Flair. It's Salem Press Encyclopedia 2019. The database is research starters, and that becomes pretty important uh, when you realize that 
Research Starters is a database itself. Quick Search or EBSCOhost is not the database. Research Starters is the database and sometimes that's important when you're trying to do your citation. So pay close attention to what database an actual article is coming from in this particular search. Uh, you can look at this. You can see it's an article. It's going to have ways to listen to the article. You can listen in, for example, a British accent. You can download the audio of the article, listen to it while you're skateboarding or whatever it is you do. You can, as you scroll down, you can see it gives you a brief history of student loan, gives you information on the student loan debt crisis, student loan loans today, and a bibliography where you can study more. It's just a basic encyclopedia article. Over on the right side, let's talk about ways we could save this or print it if we want. We can save it directly to the Google Drive. Everybody who has a Southeastern webmail account has unlimited space to save articles in Google in their shared space there. Very helpful. You can add to a folder and email a bunch of them at one time or save them at one time. You can print the article. You can uh, email the article, save it, cite it. You can even use what's called a permalink. Permalink allows you to share it with anybody else or save the actual link to the article. You can't go to the top of the browser like you might do a regular web page and highlight that and copy it and then go back to it. You have to use the permalink and if you use that it'll give you the actual way to log into the uh, article. On this uh, particular topic, when you take a look at the email, if you want to keep an email copy of the article, when you click on it, notice you got to put your email in, the subjects, comments, whatever, but very important, practically maybe nobody at Southeastern uses the Brazilian National standards for uh, citation. Likely, uh, if you're in an English class, you're going to be using an MLA and also many other classes. And in some classes, you might use APA, but you have to manually pick that citation format, MLA, and that way when you email it, you'll have it and it'll be good. You can also get a basic citation. Say you download it to the Google Drive, you might want to get a basic citation and then come back and save the citation to something like a Google Doc or Word file. If you do that, just notice that you're going to have to clean this up with your MLA manual or with the Little Brown Handbook if you have that. Uh, and you're going to have to be careful to make sure you know it's not double spaced. And it's not really EBSCOhost. This particular article is in Research Starters database. So let's go back and try to look for some other ways to narrow this down. One of the difficult parts of Quick Search is that it's just so big. You might want to narrow it down to say student loans and wages, for example student loans and wages. If you do that, am I going to get more or less than 179000 Well, you're going to get a lot less because the more you AND together using the Boolean uh, operator AND, the more focused the particular search will become. If we did student loans and wages and master's degrees, we'll even get less the more, the more you AND together. Don't just type a search out like a sentence and expect to get a good search. You need to think of your keywords and and those together. So I want to just talk about some of these resources we're getting back, some of these sources. The first one, measuring the economic success, I can look at that and tell that it's going to be a report. I can also see, see that it's full text through Eric. Eric is another database. It is going to be this particular article in Eric. Uh, if you want to know more about the particular article, go to your magnifying glass on the right. Title of your article will come up top. The authors, in this case, it's an institutional author. The source, American Institutes of, for Research. The date, that's a recent article, 2018. And sometimes it gives you an abstract. In this case, it does not. Okay. The next one uh, is going to be another report. Lots of reports, it looks like. We're getting a lot of ERIC documents, a lot of government-related information and so forth. I look down and I see in number eight that inequitable access, that article, is going to be from a journal called industry and higher education. How do I know that? I can just look at that that's going to be the title of the journal. If you're not too sure, go over to your magnifying glass and anytime you see source, that's going to be your journal name. In this case, if you want to find the article, it's best to go to Full Text Finder. Usually that will get you to the actual article itself. Number 10 has a very long title, Young Hollywood Student Loan Crisis, and it's from the Hollywood Reporter. If you want that, you just go to another database, Gale, uh, database and pull it right up. If, right over here to the right, if you go to your magnifying glass, you see the title up top, you see the authors, and then you see the source is going to be Hollywood Reporter. If you scroll down, subjects abstract, 
is just going to be a summary of the article, never quote the abstract in your paper. Well, that's going to be about it on uh, Search Everything, our quick search. We're going to go try some other sources and resources with the library, and we're going to talk about those.